Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Alice from 1988. There's been a lot of different movies of Alice in Wonderland over the years, and most of them try to portray it as more of a fairy tale. But Jean Schwankmeyer came up with a different way to adapt Alice in Wonderland, more in the vein of a surreal dream than a fairy tale, as he felt that was more of how the Lewis Carroll book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, really was, other than being a fairy tale, which usually has a moral to it. The original Lewis Carroll book, he felt didn't really have that, and he felt it was a very important book and wanted to adapt it properly. What we get with this version of Alice in Wonderland is a very surreal, strange, kind of nightmare fuelish kind of version of Alice in Wonderland. Feeling like, you know, some kind of weird European drug trip in an abandoned warehouse somewhere where you can see all the dirt and the mice and the age in the building and looking at the scribbles on the wall, trying to decipher a story out of it and realizing you just like the journey of the words and where they're taking you and are a little scared and leave wondering what the hell just happened to you. Alice is a weird movie, and that's kind of what's so awesome about it. You know that whole story about how Lewis Carroll wrote Alice in Wonderland and it's based on one of his opium trips or something? This is like if he went, what was the opium trip that inspired that story? Let's make that. That's basically what this is. And I know it's kind of lazy to go, oh, what were they high when they were making this or something like that? And obviously I'm using a very long rumored story about Lewis Carroll, but there is a real dream sense to it. He made this to act like a dream. There's a lot of dream logic. Suddenly Alice will turn and there's not a wall there, there's a field of stone going on forever. It doesn't make any sense, but you go with it. It has a weird flow to it. It has a unique flow to it. It doesn't feel like any Alice in Wonderland you've ever seen before. And this brings up the idea of adaption and how we adapt various stories into films and do interesting things with those stories. And one of the most basic keys in art, and particularly movies, is not what the subject matter is, but it's how you do that subject matter. And I think that's why Alice has remained to be a big animation classic. It was really hailed at the time, winning an Annecy Award for Best Picture at the festival they had. And it really is. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. I know this story of Alice in Wonderland. I think we all know it, basically and this feels like a wholly original different story yet it also feels familiar because he took a different slant to it it's kind of the one thing i wish more things would do if they're adapting a similar source material is kind of go well these guys did it this way let's do it a different way and make a more unique film making it actually worthwhile seeing and not kind of a waste of your time like you know that tim burton one or something i had to get a jab in this one feels like a wholly uniquely original experience and i actually think this is a great film if you ever wanted to get someone who wants to get into art films or stop motion or kind of interesting European films to watch this film because they're already familiar somewhat with the subject matter and they maybe can follow it a little better. Similar to how when I was getting into film my parents showed me Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast. Now these are different films than that. This is kind of being a sort of answer to the Walt Disney, Alice in Wonderland, and several other versions. And Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast was obviously made way before Disney's Beauty and the Beast and was the most famous one for a long period of time until the early 90s. But I think it works in that way there. It uses the familiar and it's kind of a way in. If you love Alice in Wonderland, be like, yes, but you've never seen this one before. The white rabbit is like a taxidermied rabbit who keeps his pocket watch basically inside himself and when it comes out all this sawdust comes out. There's a lot of taxidermy and fish heads and like animal bones and stuff. I mean it looks like a Nine Inch Nails music video but I don't think that's exactly what they were going for. It's not necessarily made to be creepy and scary. It's made to be surreal and strange and kind of looking at the oddity and the dream nature of it and the fearfulness nature of it. This has always been kind of a favorite or at least when I was in college and stuff with all the art kids. You to love this movie and that's actually how I saw it. They're like, oh, but have you seen Alice? And I was like, the Woody Allen movie starring Mia Farrow? And they're like, no. And I was like, oh, okay. But when I saw this, I was kind of shocked at like, what a crazy way to adapt this story. And that's what makes it so interesting. It really brings into the idea of adaptation and what you can do with an adaptation. And I think this filmmaker was having some trouble throughout most of his career getting banned in Czechoslovakia and uh, not being able to make his films. And he had sort of a resurgence and ended up being able to to make this film has made several others apparently has a really cool version of Faust which after this I do want to see because the visual nature of this film is so 
fascinating. He can't help but be interesting. It's like he took on every different sequence and set piece with interesting visual ideas and interesting ways to do it and surprising ways to take it in ways that you're like, this is strange and feels like I'm in like a demon witch's house in Eastern Europe and also on lots of like hardcore drugs and I'm not sure what's happening to my life, but this is like such a cool thing. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. And there's a lot of that, but it also like tells the story in a way where I'm fascinated on on what his version of a lot of these things will be. And certainly I know the story of Faust, so I guess when I see that I will be thinking about how um, he adapted that as well. But I think it is more than just a contrarian kind of take on Alice in Wonderland. It really is a really beautiful film. Combining the one live action per character, I guess, which is the girl Alice, which might have been a callback to how the original Walt Disney uh, films Alice in Cartoon Land or Alice in Toon Land or whichever was a live action girl in animated film. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. If it was, that's really inspired. But she's the only live action person. They keep cutting to her lips and it just says, said the white rabbit and things like that. And it gives it kind of an idea that she is entering this world and is not a part of this world. Sometimes she shrinks down and becomes a doll, probably because they're child labor laws, but this is a foreign country, so I don't know like what the child labor laws were. Maybe they didn't have to take her off set or something. But sometimes it'll be fully stop motion. He cuts in a way that like it sometimes stays in moments but the weird thing is like having it cut to her lips going like thought alice just her saying thought or someone said and she's narrating the whole story and she even says like this is a film made for children now i saw the english dub not the one in its original language and i did that because that's how i remembered it and also the streaming service i watched it only had the dub version and the dub version people say is surrealer and makes less sense and things like that which for a film like this i'm kind of like i don't see that as a problem Problem. And they do have a little English girl which brings it back to its English roots as Alice in Wonderland's an English story and so forth, which I thought naturally really worked for it. I like that version. I have not seen the other version. And, you know, you can criticize me for that in the comments and all that. But I like that voice. I think it really fits it. A lot of people disagree or say it takes them out of it even because that was the way it was originally released. And they didn't release the original language uh, track with subtitles in America, I believe, for a while. I thought it was released theatrically that way, but the New York Times review seemed to talk about the English dub. So the characters signs using things like there's a lot of taxidermy in this which is an unnerving idea in itself and then he puts like googly eye kind of things on the faces the mad hatter looks weird weird snake guy that's made out of a sock that just like suddenly appears is strange as hell there's just like so many crazy and just visually inventive ways that he finds to like make alice as a movie so interesting and watchable there's a lot of art movies that you're like just be interested in how it flows and the movement of it and and how unique it is but this is like sort of next level because it sort of understands it's all those things to a certain regard but like keeps going with it keeps pushing it and like doesn't rest on its laurels of that i think a lot of films will do that and they might get boring after a while but this really flows and there's so much visually going on that it like moves from set piece to set piece that like doesn't really need to slow down to explain its story and it kind of understands that you as an audience probably understand that story to a certain regard but i still think it tells the story rather well and is surreal and strange at the same time it's hard to be surreal and tell a straight story like this and certainly i think a lot of like dream logic kind of stuff can just go off the rails but using that framework of the alice in wonderland thing i think centers this film a lot more than most people probably would think it could i really like alice and i've liked it for a, a long time i've always wanted to review it really just because it's such a unique way to do the alice in wonderland story and i guess it's like kind of a goth kind of a thing like i'm sure kids who are into the cure totally love this film because it is like such a uniquely dark twisted kind of version of it but it also isn't like it feels like a film for children but it also feels scary and strange and odd and it goes into the whole thing of like both kid logic and incredibly impressive visual storytelling and visual storytelling from the place of a dream which i think works for stop motion because stop motion feels sort of natural but also unnatural particularly how he does it i think there's almost like a reason for that kind of style of animation in this you know it's one thing to just make a stop motion movie you know that's cool i like those but this is different it's like he found a way to naturally integrate that into it and to play with the alice in wonderland story and really get into the roots of how he interpreted that story clearly everyone else interpreted it as a fairy tale and fit it into the framework that they felt it should be and this director john schwankenheimer 
just came along and said, you know, I think it is this way and it's important to me. And there is like kind of a personal view on it. It does feel more like the idea of the opium trips that we've all heard of that influence these things and the surrealism and the drug taking that this story has been claimed with for a long time from the Jefferson Airplane song White Rabbit to now, which that came out like 20 years before this movie came out. It's always been attached to this story, but I think this is the only one that really goes into that surrealness more than any other. You know, the other ones kind of soft in the blow by being more of a commercial fairy tale type of story and Alice I think is commercial in the fact that there is some attractiveness to the idea that this is a different version on that story and this is a version of Alice in Wonderland certainly but it's more about this kind of uncompromising scary strange frenetic kind of visuals that Alice has throughout it. It really does feel like you're like trapped in a crazy witch dimension where like taxidermied animals and fish heads are like walking around talking and as much as you get used to the visual style, Alice will go into a different part of Wonderland and suddenly you'll be like, whoa, they're doing this now? There's just always new ideas throughout Alice. And I just really found that incredibly beautiful. I think this film is crazy and it is sort of nightmare fuel in a way and I love it for that. I used to hear from, you know, all the cool kids in art school that this was like such a cool, unique, strange movie and it is that kind of kind of crossover weird art movie that you can sit back and go like, whoa, this thing exists. And it makes me want to see more of John Svankenmeyer's uh, other films just because it's just such a beautiful thing with stop motion. It's really trying to play with dream logic and stop motion, which is something I don't think see a lot of stop motion doing. We're trying to tell more literal stories. This takes on the natural surrealism of its own animation style to tell one of the weirder and stranger stories in the public consciousness and really play in that dream logic way and use a form of animation that naturally fits into that. Alice has always been a major classic of world animation and probably one of the best different kind of ways to adapt a fairy tale and a fairy tale that we've all accepted the kind of natural version that it is and showing the different ways you can adapt a story and still have fun with it and really say something with it. And I think one of the biggest lessons you can walk away with with this film version of Alice in Wonderland is how to adapt something and how to have fun with it and introduce you to a whole new world you never expected would be there. And that's kind of the glory of this film is it naturally shows you how to adapt something and to present you into a whole new world and you will definitely be in a different world than you ever expected when you watch this. I never could even dream to have expected while watching this film, which I think will always keep it in a high regard as a kind of wholly different kind of vision because it knew how to adapt a story that we've heard before and make it far different than we ever expected, almost making it such a crazy adaptation that it feels wholly original and not a different version on a story that we've heard before. So if you've seen Alice and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.